from my first visit as an eighth grader when we entered the school building father william schmidt the founding president of Brebeuf, was there to greet us he gave us a personal tour of the school i recall going to the chapel and listening to father schmidt he made you feel like he had all afternoon to spend with you i knew then that i wanted to attend Brebeuf. I finished about 30 spots lower on Brebeuf's entrance exam than I did on cathedrals. And I said, well, that sews it up. You know, I'm going to go to cathedral. That just makes sense. You know, I'm going to be one of the smartest guys at cathedral, and I'm in the middle of the pack at Brebeuf. And they said, no, 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 no. You need the challenge. And uh, uh, my eighth grade nun, uh, Sister Morella, said, no, he's, he's got to go to Brebeuf. It was kind of my mother's decision. And how that happened was I had, uh, the county track meet was at North Central. And there was, Coach Baker came to my mother. I had won the 100 and the 220 and I'd set a couple records as a sophomore. So he ended up talking to my mother. And I didn't know what they were talking about. But come to find out, he was talking about me coming to rebuff. When I was in seventh grade, I, I was at home and, and this Jesuit priest showed up at our house for dinner and I was in seventh grade and my dad wanted me to meet Father Schmidt who was the new, the incoming president of Brebeuf. And I, I was suspect because I also wanted to go to cathedral like most of the class of 66 and 67 here. My mother wanted me to go to cathedral high school. Uh, I wanted to go to Sacred Heart High School which is on the south side. That's where I grew up. And uh, we, we never could get along. And finally, my dad one day said, hey, listen, they're building a new high school out on the north side. He said, you want to take a ride out there and take a look at it? And I said, sure. And I came out here and looked at it, and I said, absolutely. We were really uh, surrounded by uh, cornfields and cows, as I recall. The old transportation was when you got out of school, you went home with a thumb, or you caught a bus. Well, my mother would give me uh, $3.50 a week for the bus. And, of course, I would just keep that money and put it in my pocket, and I'd thumb home on a good day. Heck, I'd never ride the bus unless I had to. Bill Schmidt, Father Bill Schmidt, and uh, Jack Coakley, Carl Hertz, uh, Jack Baker, um, Don Maines, Jim Gavin, Fred McCashlin, Carl Hertz, uh, Greg Foote, uh, Father O'Brien, uh, Father Williams, Father Ray Dunn. Don Maines uh, was certainly uh, one. Uh, he, was a, he was a great guy. Carl Hertz, uh, I liked him an awful lot. The two Pauls, Father Paul O'Brien and Father Paul Peterson. Well, they were tough, um, but they were tough in a loving sort of way. Um, they, would, um, they would lower the boom on you in a hurry but they would tell you why they did it and helped you understand what discipline was about. Well, when we came here and we, our first year, we were, what, 13, 14 years old, and there were Jesuits who were misters at the time coming out to teach their time, and they were 19, 20, 21. Uh, so, no, they weren't that much older than us. It was an us versus them mentality. It was us against the Jesuits. We were going to try to find a way to get over on these guys. It was like fresh meat when a new scholastic would come to school. You just wanted to see how long it would take before you had them running and screaming out of the classroom. And uh, we had this favorite little thing that we'd try to do called the elephant stampede, which we uh, did on a couple of occasions to uh, uh, new scholastics or new lay teachers for that matter. And uh, every time they turned their back to write on the chalkboard, we'd inch our desks up a little bit so that by the time the class was over, we'd have them pinned against the wall because uh, they, they really didn't know what to say. They were scared, more scared of us than we were of them, the new guys. And My favorite faculty member was probably Mr. McCashland. I mean, you would probably hear that a lot. My memory was going to social studies class while they were having mass because I'm a Protestant. And just having him speak the way he spoke very eloquently so that was very impressive for a kid from the west side of town. And he was Mr. O'Brien when we, we met him, but he's, he's really uh, followed us and kept up with us through college. John Hiddle, who had struck fear of God into me as my freshman football coach, 
had help sessions instead of a D student and geometry became a B student because of him. But the other thing was he was, um, uh, had the best arm of any teacher as far as being able to throw an eraser or a piece of chalk and he could catch somebody from 20 yards right in the forehead. If you're involved in extracurricular activities, uh, you'd have to go up to Father Smith's office, who was the prefect of discipline, and say, uh, Father, I can't make it to Jug tonight because of football practice. And he'd say, okay, to camp, that's four for one. I said, four for one? You know, Witchker got two for one. I'm not in a good mood now. It's four for one. You want to go for five? So by the end of the football year, you know, if you had one jug, it turned into like 50. And I actually had to... Um, I was a pretty good guy, but uh, when I graduated, I had to come out and serve 75 jugs before they'd give me my diploma. But I can remember when we looked out, when we came out the back door, uh, there was nothing but a old cornfield stubbles, rocks, and dirt. Our first football practice, they'd line us up, and we would run as hard as we could down 25, 30 yards down, stop, turn around, and pick up all the rocks. Throw them in a, in a pile. And that's what we would do during practice. We'd do that several times. It was always brutal. We would start at the school and then pick rocks up to walk to the back of the field, where the back of the football field is now. That was the only semi-level place. And so the first, you know, really the first few days, we would create a line and walk, and somebody would have wheelbarrows, two or three people, and they would walk in front of us and we'd be throwing rocks into the wheelbarrow. We didn't win a single game our first year of varsity football. We didn't have any seniors. We went 0-8-1. and My junior year, we were six teams homecoming opponents because they just assumed they were going to walk all over us. We went 10-0. and We went uh, undefeated and we went 10-0 and the next year. 20-0, uh, and 0, uh, two years in a row, and uh, something that's never been matched uh, in the annals of Burbuff uh, football history. From day one, you walked in here, and on the walls were all of these colleges, Jesuit colleges, and you didn't even give it a second thought. You were here for one purpose, and that was to get to college. They have this uh, long legacy of education, and it's, it's just a spiritually based procedure that they go through. Um, the real diversity of education, of athletics, um, the diversity of the staff, the student body. I mean, that, I think that's, you know, very important. They really emphasized community service, and that, that was kind of a hallmark for Brebeuf. I think that's something that the Jesuit influence and the Jesuit spirituality, um, you know, that's a hallmark of the Jesuits. Uh, and I, I think they kind of got that started here in Indianapolis. Well, it was all boys. And so that was unique, and we had to wear ties, and we couldn't talk of the hallway. And it was pretty strict, and um, it was very strict, actually, compared to the high school I came from. So that, that was impressive to me. That got my attention. There were a number of days during my four years at Brebuff where no other schools in the city were open because of snow. We were open. I mean, they just said, you know, Sorry guys, you know, you can get here somehow and if the buses were running, they, and they always did, they made the buses run. I don't think we had a snow day for the four years that I was at Brebeuf. It's been over 50 years since I first walked in the doors here and I am still waiting for an answer of why our homework had to be done in ink but we weren't allowed to have pens in school. Um, I don't know if it was a trick or a gimmick or uh, a test of some kind but in 50 years, I've never been able to make any sense of it. Uh, one of the funniest things that ever happened was the very first day of class with, uh, at that time, Father Greg Foote, uh, who jumped up on his desk to teach us a cheer in Latin um, and at the top of our lungs. Where here's this man in, in a cassock, full-length cassock, and he doesn't climb onto it. He jumps from the floor up onto the desk in one jump because he wanted to make sure that the uh, people at the other end of the building would hear us. So uh, we did get a visit from Father Faye then after we were screaming this cheer.
We used to go to confession every day just for something to do because we were at Mass and uh, listen to the other guy's confession. And uh, one, of my, um, one of my classmates uh, told the priest he had murdered his brother the night before and the last thing I saw was the priest chasing the guy down the hallway because he knew he was lying. Chuck Gaddy, who was a, a year older than us, was uh, we were getting ready for class one morning and uh, everybody was kind of standing around and we, as we were getting to our uh, desk, uh, he said to a, what looked like a student to him, hey buddy, you better get your desk, the teacher's going to be here any minute, and uh, the, this gentleman introduced himself as the teacher, I believe it was Mr. Hasick. One day in the spring we had a baseball game scheduled and it rained, and I was going into the biology lab, which was downstairs, and I looked out the window and I noticed uh, Coach Miller was out there on the field. That was back when it was in the southwest corner. And uh, didn't think much of it. About 15 minutes later, uh, there's all this black smoke. It looked like a forest fire. And uh, Coach Miller had taken about 20 gallons of gasoline and set the infield dirt on fire. And, um, and we played that afternoon. Puff is, is on a roll right now. And, and I think you know that's that's been a series of all these different presidents on building blocks of where Father Jack is now and, and his his ability to to communicate Jesuit spirituality and 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 Jesuit education. So that I hope Burbuff stays the course. Um, they have uh, drawn a line in the sand as to what they are, who they want to be, um, and uh, leadership will be important for them. Um, to be an anchor in this community. They're seen as an anchor in this community and my hope is that they'll stay the course. They've got a great guy that's in charge of it now, uh, Father Jack Dennis. I think they couldn't have picked a better man to be president of, of this place. He is just so energetic and enthusiastic, uh, not only with uh, the people he works with, but the students. The teachers and the uh, leadership here uh, understand Ignatian spirituality. Um, and I've introduced myself to that over the course of years, and I think their, their ability to, uh, uh, to teach uh, young people that they need to give back, that they do need to live for others, um, is what is critical to what happens up here. What I, I hope for Burbuff is that it will continue to be a beacon for, uh, for students all over and become a, remain a model for all secondary schools uh, for not only great education, but for diversity, uh, leadership, um, compassion. Uh, I think of Burbuff, I think of all of those things. Burbuff has been a second family to me. Um, the guys that I went to school with are, 10 of us are still best friends. I mean, they're the ones that I see or talk to on a weekly basis. My favorite memory of Burbuff are the relationships that I developed here and beyond uh, that began the first day of school. The majority of the friendships I made back then are still my best friends today. In fact, my best friend, Dan Dick, we met uh, at football practice, the very foot, foot, first foot, football practice back in August of uh, 1962. We were seniors the whole way through. We started out as freshmen, then we were sophomores and freshmen, then juniors. Uh, so we got to be seniors the entire way through. And with that came a lot of uh, responsibility, which I think we, we carried right away. We knew what we were doing. We knew that this was how the school was starting. Um, but also with that was one of the things that, that I have said, and I think a lot of my fellow classmates say when people ask us, well, what, when did you graduate? and we say first class. We've always said that, and that's not only because we were the first class, but we considered ourselves first class men. And uh, it's just been a real source of um, pride and joy for me to be involved over the years with, with anything uh, to do with Burbuff and getting together with uh, uh, other old classmates that I don't see as often, but uh, it's, it's just been a fine institution to, to kind of hook my wagon to and hang around with. We, we feel now, looking back 50 years, we can't believe it was 50 years ago we were going to school here. We still think we're teenagers.
I will a lot of times have Brebeuf right up on top as, as a reference uh, and the fact that I went to Brebeuf. Uh, in Indianapolis, it is uh, so well respected um, and I'm proud to be an alumni. It's, it's been a pleasure for me to do all the things that I've been able to be active with over the last 50 years with this place and I hope I got another 50. I doubt it, but I'd like to have it.